Welcome to Indiana University's Sculpture Department Foundry. We're preparing to cast a number of works in bronze and aluminum. The process of mold making, creating wax models, and pouring the sand and plaster investment molds all took place weeks ago. We're about to pull the investment molds out of a gas burnout kiln, where we have been firing them at 900 degrees for the past 48 hours. By now, all of the wax of our sculpture models have completely melted out, leaving a crisp, clean cavity inside to properly channel and contain our bronze. We handled the investment molds carefully as to not disrupt any details inside that might break off if bumped. We lower the investment molds into a sand pit after a brief encounter with our shop vac to remove any loose particles of sand or plaster that may have broken free. This ensures a clean casting. Sand is then packed around the molds for stability during pouring. We now wait for the furnace to bring the bronze up to temperature. We reuse pour cups with gates attached from previous pours to remelt for our current project. Metal is placed near the furnace opening to pre-warm and dry the metal before adding it to the crucible. Failing to do so could be potentially explosive as the water on the cold metal would instantly vaporize splattering bronze lava everywhere. We turned on the air mixture to create a reduction flame. This causes the fire to reach out of the furnace, creating a shield from atmospheric air which had otherwise caused the bronze to be brittle. Now it's time to suit up. Protection starts with the ground floor with heavy leather boots. They are a must. With long pants, we add to that an aluminized apron, leather spats to protect our shins, a leather welder's jacket, aluminized heat-resistant gloves, hard hat fitted with a metal face shield. I think we're ready for war. Our bronze is nearly at the temperature. We will pour when it reaches 2,000 degrees as measured by our pyrometer, although it can be poured anywhere from 1,900 to 2,200 degrees. Now that we're at 2,000 degrees, we kill the gas, swing out the flue, and plug out the crucible with our tongs. We set the crucible on a stack of kiln brick with a piece of cardboard on top. The ash from the cardboard will prevent any slag or glass on the bottom from sticking to the brick. Billy is now skimming the slag or impurities from the surface of the bronze. The bronze inside is very fluid and glows like lava. No, get every bit of that slag, Billy. We don't want no crappy pour. There you go. Using the shank, we secure the crucible with spring-tensioned clamps and lift together with me as the driver and Billy as the dead man. The whole rig weighs about 150 pounds. Todd is our spotter and lets us know when each mold is full. A 
I try to charge each mold quickly and carefully. A strong, consistent flow will ensure that the metal flows hot throughout the mold, capturing every detail. Once the molds are all filled, we pour off any remaining bronze into a preheated ingot mold. This creates the perfect sized chunk of bronze to use in our next pour. Unfortunately at this time my camera runs out of memory, so I delete and continue. Before we can pack it in, we have one last casting to do. I have a mold for an aluminum cup that I need to pour before we could get out of the heat. The process is mostly the same, though instead of heating the metal to 2000 degrees, we only go to 1400. Once the aluminum is to temperature, we extract it and handle it in much the same way, except for one additional step. Todd hands me a pellet of hexachloroethane to submerge into the aluminum. This degasses and cleans the metal and makes it denser. With a prevailing breeze, I'm able to stay upwind and out of the noxious fumes. I have edited the smoke to run in reverse for your viewing pleasure. Cast metal objects are not hard to find. We often miss the fact that the metal in the sculptures we see was once fluid and free-flowing from someone's private miniature volcano. Even the most delicate works of bronze were once born from such intensity. I hope that many of you will seek the opportunity to experience a foundry in action of any scale. It is impressive no matter what the size.